Hey crafty people, it's Tasha here with another video for Pear Blossom Press. Today we're going to make this fun campfire birthday card, stepping it up with a few showstopper elements. We'll be using a one light and a mini action wobble from Pear Blossom Press, plus lots of heavy doodle products and I'm going to have the full supplies list below in the description. I'm starting with my night sky because I want to give t it time to dry whilst I work on the rest of my elements. I've got a piece of Blueberry Bliss cardstock and I'm using some Heffy Memo Tape to fix my Layered Star stencil onto it. I don't want to risk my stencil shifting whilst I'm applying my Gold Hero Paste. I do always like to give my paste a quick mix when I open it. Then I'm taking some out of the tub with my angled palette knife and spreading that over the whole stencil. You can see that I'm spreading from different angles to make sure I get paste evenly across the whole thing and I really get it into those points on all of those stars. It already looks gorgeous, but once dry, that gold really pops. Now I've taken images from a few different stamp sets and I'll use them together to create a cute scene card. I'm stamping them with Versafine Onyx Black Ink onto alcohol marker friendly cardstock. I've gone ahead and stamped them twice to give me a really bold black outline. And now I'm adding clear embossing powder over the top. It's going to stick to that wet ink and once heat set, I'll have a really nice embossed outline for my images. This is also going to encapsulate that ink, so there's no risk of it bleeding once I start my colouring. I did go ahead and colour these off camera, but I'll list the marker combinations over on the Pear Blossom Press blog. My stars are all dry now. I have stamped and coloured some trees onto some green bean cardstock too. So I can start to get an idea of where things are going to sit on my card. I find the easiest way to do that is by using an A2 panel to measure against. I'm checking if I have enough room to cut this hooray die from my sky. And once I'm happy with how it will sit... I'm just sliding that other panel out and tacking the die so that it doesn't shift. I'm planning to eclipse this, so it's super important that I don't lose any of those tiny bits from in between the wood. Almost all of it stayed in place in the die, so I'm just sticking some memo tape onto the back so I can't lose any of it. Don't worry, this will all start to make sense very soon. I've also cut the same sentiment from some double-sided adhesive foam and once I've carefully peeled the word off that tape backing, I'm adding it straight onto that foam piece. This is going to give my word some lift and dimension, which is absolutely key to this technique. I'm slowly lining it up and pressing into the small amount of adhesive that I've already revealed before gently pulling back the rest of the paper. I want to double up my tree line so I'm adhering a second one just using a couple of strips of scrap cardstock for a thin separation of the two. I've made sure to offset them to make it look like two completely different images. Now for the exciting bit. Let's light it up. <laughs> These one lights are the quickest and easiest way to add some paper crafting magic because there's no wires to mess with and definitely no connecting needed. Just insert your battery and test to make sure the light comes on and then you are good to go. I'm just figuring out where I need to put my hole that will let the light through because I need to make sure to leave enough clearance for the battery and button to the side but also for my campfire image to sit too because I'll be making holes in both the green panel and the fire. I'm using a craft knife to make my hole. It doesn't need to be particularly pretty because the campfire will be sitting over it. 
Um, I just want to make sure that the maximum of amount of light can get through. So it needs to be a proper hole, not just like a thin slit from the knife. I'm always testing the light at every step to make sure it's all working and how I want. Now, I can use some double-sided adhesive to hold that in place behind the hole. I'm making a hole in my fire too, and when I line those both up, you'll see the light shining bright. I do want to make it more of a warmer glow though, so to achieve that, I'm making a quick filter that I can put over the hole in my fire. So I'm scribbling some orange marker onto a piece of vellum and I'm trimming it down to glue it to the back of my campfire and that is going to give some colour. You could do this with any colour marker to give your light the right hue to fit in with your design. Using vellum softens and diffuses the light. If you don't want that then try using a piece of acetate instead and just colour that to match. I don't want the white core of the cardstock to be visible um, where I made those cuts so I'm just going to colour that with some orange marker too. And now when I add some glue and place the campfire, if I press the light you get this perfectly warm soft glow. I love that so much. Obviously that light does add some bulk and we need to build up the rest of this panel with foam adhesive. This is the best ever foam tape from Pear Blossom Press and it's the perfect thickness for these lights. So I'm adding strips of this all around to support it and allow for the bouncy hold that I need to allow the button to be pressed. If we built it up with cardstock scraps uh, for example, that wouldn't allow us to press down where the button is so the light couldn't work. That's why it really does need to be some type of foam. I need to place my sky before the ground so I'm adhering it with double sided adhesive tape onto an A2 panel. Then I'm sticking my word die cut that is the foam adhesive behind it back into place in the negative section. Just making sure that all of that is sitting exactly as it should be. Then I can trim off the excess panel with my long blade scissors to get a smooth edge. Now back to those extra little bits. For this technique to work we need to have a solid unbroken background when you see it from the front but when you angle slightly that extra dimension lets that die cut come shining through. So I'm adding some dots of glue into all those gaps and then pressing the right piece into place right against that backing panel. I really love doing this technique. It's allowing for a subtle clean look but literally elevating the bit that you want to draw attention to. So simple yet so clever. When I held the ground piece against the sky, it was just kind of lacking in something. It felt too flat. So I'm going to add some dimension with some darker colour around the edges. That slight change in colour makes a huge difference to the card. Normally, I'd do this before adding the foam adhesive and definitely before beginning to stick any die cut elements. But it's a, an essential change in my plan for the card so I feel like this is a big enough benefit to the design that I was willing to kind of make the exception to my rule. Now that looks so much better and I can add it to the backing panel. It's time all it's time to add all of my coloured images. I like to get them all together and just play around with their positioning until I'm happy with how it's looking. Does this take me forever? Sometimes? Yes. <laughs> now I've sped this footage up quite a bit because I wanted to show you my process without keeping you guys here for too long. <laughs> If you want to, you can slow the footage by changing the playback speed from the menu at the top of the video. 
when I'm making a scene card, I always make more than I'll actually need or more than would actually fit on the card. This way, I have enough to put little pieces in the background and it doesn't matter that you're not going to see it all because you've still got plenty more to place. I think that's what makes a scene look really natural and it always takes up, takes it up several notches in my opinion. An example of this is that flask I have behind my squirrel. You can only see a little bit but that allows your mind to kind of fill in the scene. So if we were looking at a photo we'd know things are going on in that photo we can't see so it should be the same for this. I guess what I'm trying to say is that those little things kind of trick your mind into believing that this 2D picture is a representation of a 3D scene. Another way to do this is by adding some actual dimension. <laughs> some things are glued straight down onto the panel, like the camper van for example. This is supposed to be in the distance. But then some of the closest bits got popped up on foam adhesive, like the raccoon, for instance. Now, let's take it to the sky. <laughs> the same goes regarding having background elements that is kind of, and that is kind of what the eclipse sentiment is. It isn't going to be the only sentiment, so it's okay that parts of it are covered. I'm using a mini action wobble for my owl, but the sticky bit was just a bit too big, so I'm trimming it down a little bit. Just taking little slivers off each side and testing it against my owl. You don't want to cut it down too much or you won't have enough purchase to hold, but you can definitely trim it a bit. I like to use my reverse action tweezers to make sure that I've placed it correctly um, in exactly where I want it and it helps to not touch the sticky part with my fingers because that is going to take away some of that stick. Then I've added two strips of cardstock behind my sentiment which is a pre-printed one from WOW and that's going to sit across my die cut. Lastly, I'm stamping a little star over the button for my one light to let the recipient know that they should push there. And here's my finished birthday card with a glowing campfire and flying owl. How much fun is this? It's such a special keep keepsake and it can be so easy when you just break it down into individual steps. Thank you so much for spending this time with me. I always appreciate it so very much. I'd love to know what you think about these tips and ideas, so drop me a comment below. Also, don't forget to like, follow and share to all your crafty friends. Do all the things. <laughs> Have a lovely, happy, safe and wonderful week. Stay crafty. Bye.